Welcome to Mr. Creamer Science. Today's video is a quick introduction about how to write MYP science lab reports. This video will focus specifically on MYP assessment criterion B, inquiring and designing. The purpose of lab reports is not simply to submit a document to your teacher for a grade. The idea is that you should design and conduct a scientific experiment or investigation that allows you to record, collect, and process data, analyze that data to reach a conclusion, and then evaluate the method to determine whether your investigation was valid, reliable, and allowed you to answer your original inquiry or research question. Criterion B in MYP science is specifically about asking questions or inquiring and designing scientific investigations or experiments to find answers to the questions or inquiries. The language here is specific to the year five objectives in MYP sciences, so it's most applicable to years nine and 10. But you can also use this guidance for other MYP years, such as MYP one, two, and three, which roughly correspond to grades six, seven, and eight in most schools. Let's get into criterion B. Criterion B is the design phase of your investigation. This is how you assemble or set up the experiment that you're going to run to find an answer to your question. Criterion B has four strands. Explaining problems to be tested or investigating, formulating and explaining hypotheses, explaining your variables, and designing your method, including safety, ethics, and the materials and equipment that you need. Let's look at each of those in detail. The first strand, strand one, uses the command term to explain. Explain a problem or question to be tested by a scientific investigation. When you explain something, you don't just tell how it happens, you have to address the question of why. That means you have to give reasons. Generally speaking, you're going to want to frame your research question in terms of a real world problem that needs solving. You can frame that around the global context from the MYP unit planner, or you might consider using one of the UN sustainable development goals as a jumping off point for your investigation. A research question should be open ended. If you can answer it with a yes, a no, or a number, or a short one or two word answer, it's not open-ended. Consider beginning your research question with, to what extent should, dot, dot, dot. The debatable questions in your MYP unit planners frequently lead to good inquiry questions for scientific investigations. The second strand in criterion B is about formulating and explaining a testable hypothesis using correct scientific reasoning. When you formulate a hypothesis, you need to very clearly predict how one of your variables influences or changes the other one. So your hypothesis has to explicitly include the independent variable and the dependent variable in your investigation. When you explain the hypothesis, you have to tell why they interact the way they do or why you think they interact the way you do. And when you explain them, you should support that explanation with evidence or examples generally from reliable sources or previous scientific research. This is a great opportunity 
to demonstrate your scientific communication skills and cite all of your sources properly. This will make all of your teachers and your teacher librarian extremely happy and it also makes sure that you comply with the International Baccalaureate academic integrity policies. The third strand in Criterion B is about explaining your variables. It reads, explain, that means to tell why, explain how to manipulate the independent and dependent variables, and explain how sufficient relevant data will be collected. Again, to explain is to tell why. I'm going to keep coming back to why. Right? How you're going to manipulate the variables. How do you change the independent variable across at least five different intervals at equal levels so that you have a consistent spread or spectrum of that variable? To explain how you're measuring the dependent variable, look at what tools and methods will you use to measure concretely the response of the thing that changes as a result of what you have manipulated. The strand says you must have sufficient data. At an absolute minimum, you need five intervals of the independent variable and three trials at each of those intervals. So if you're running a simple physics experiment about how the slope of a track affects the acceleration of the vehicle, you need to have at least five different slopes of the track and you need to measure the acceleration of the vehicle at least three different times at each one of those different slopes. I recommend five by five as a better rule because that will set you up for success in the diploma program. Of course, your data also has to be relevant to your research question, which means you've got to figure out what are the other things you need to control or limit so that they don't have an undesirable impact or effect on the data that you're really targeting to answer your research question. To revisit this idea of a physics investigation about slope, if I use a different vehicle with different masses on each of those trials, there's a possibility that that variable, because it's not controlled and not kept the same, will affect the data and will produce results that are not reliable. The fourth strand in Criterion B is about designing your method. This part of Criterion B is pretty formulaic. I suggest that first you create a bullet point list of the materials you need. If it's a chemistry lab, that's going to involve all the glassware that you need, the chemical reagents that you need, the safety equipment that you might need. That will include things like Bunsen burners and ring stands, any of that lab equipment that you need. If you're doing field work, you need to go through all of the things you need to assess the different environmental factors that you're investigating. Your method should be logical. The easiest way to do this is to make sure that you use numbered steps and that every step has a single action. If you find yourself using the word do this and then do that, split that step into two steps because it's two actions. Make sure that every step includes the materials or equipment required to actually do that step of your investigation. And last, before you list your method, a good idea to have kind of at the top of your methodology or procedure section are safety and ethical considerations. 
Look at the material safety and data, sheet, data sheets, the MSDS forms for anything that you have in your school. Your teacher should be able to provide it for you. Cons don't just write generic lab safety rules. Make sure the safety measures you include in your investigation are specific to what you're investigating. If it's a chemistry lab, your safety measures should address chemical safety for the reagents that you're using. If you're conducting environmental field work, it should consider things such as sanitation and hygiene to prevent infection either of yourself or of the organisms that you interact with. If you're conducting a physics lab, particularly around mechanics, Newton's, Newton's laws of motion and forces, you may want to consider some safety things around closed toed shoes that prevent people from getting physically injured while handling heavy objects. Don't just use the generic lab rules that you might find posted in the classroom. In summary, criterion B is the part of a scientific lab investigation in which you're asking a focused research question and designing a way to find an answer to that question. It involves four strands, explaining the problem or the question to be tested, formulating and explaining a hypothesis or a prediction using scientific reasons, explaining how you're going to change and measure your variables to make sure that you have enough data related to your research question, and lastly, that you have a safe method that is logical and complete, including all of the materials that you need to conduct the investigation. I hope you found this useful. If you'd like to learn more about MYP Sciences, please visit my website, mrcreamerscience.com.